you know what they say, you win some and you lose some. I meant to test four different types of belts on this test, and it ends up I could only find two of them. And one was the belt that I was already using. I was mainly interested in this stuff, the white polyurethane with the steel cords, which is good because I could actually get a hold of this, even though everybody seemed to be out of it and I had to order it from China and wait like six weeks for it to come. I'd hope to at least get a hold of polyester as well, but I couldn't find any of that. And then I was hoping I could find Kevlar. And the point was to test the belt stretch, the ringing, and the force that it put on the steppers. But because of the results you'll see, I didn't end up going that deep with it. Now, I'll probably do a similar video of this in the future, and I'll keep the white belt around and the regular belt around, and I'll test them both on a printer with a much longer axis, because the printer I tested it on is fairly small. I designed this printer from scratch, it's my test bed printer, and it already has a system where it has basically double belt which is gonna significantly reduce ringing anyway. So at least I have the stuff on hand that I can repeat the test in the future under different conditions. But let's go ahead and see what happened. This thing right here is what I was spending all the time testing. And when I say testing, I mean a lot of testing, like a lot of testing. And that's just this basic ringing model that comes from here. And I was hoping to test these four types of timing belt compositions against each other and see if any of them reduce the ringing. But these are the two subjects that I ended up with. Standard neoprene belt with fiber class reinforcement. And then the polyurethane stuff with the steel belts. This chart from Chemiflex shows you some of the benefits and detriments of the various different compositions. And just handling the different belts shows you that there is quite a significant difference between the two of them. The white's pretty stiff, whereas the black stuff, which everybody's used to handling, is just floppy all over the place. And everything I used was 2GT6 or GT26 millimeter, whichever nomenclature you prefer. And this is what the label looked like on the polyurethane stuff. Which, according to my Translate app, means this. Not so sure about the FRA Monopoly deal, but whatever. Now this stuff is pretty tough to cut. I use these straight tin snips to do it. If you try to use regular scissors, you're gonna have a bad day. Whereas the regular stuff is pretty easy and I filleted a little bit here to show the cords for you. And then in this close up, you can see the steel belts and the polyurethane stuff. Started with fairly typical settings and then I varied the speed between 40 and 100 for the outer wall. I also changed the jerk and acceleration, acceleration between 1,000 and 4,000, and the jerk between 5 and 25. And then just did a metric schwack load of printing these things. First with the regular belt, and then with the polyurethane belt. How did it work out? Well, let's have a Star Wars side wipe and scrawl. Nope, not really worth it. I mean, I could see a good place for this being something like if you had a belt-driven Z-axis, maybe on the Delta printer, or if you had a, a raised Z platform that weighed a whole bunch and you still wanted to use belt for it for some reason, because it's not gonna stretch. But I definitely wouldn't use it on small pulleys. And by small, I mean 16 to 20 teeth. I don't see it lasting very long being bent at that tight a curve. So if you're going 24 teeth, 26 teeth, 30 teeth, 40 teeth, something like that, you'll probably be okay. As you can see from this print, it looks practically identical. The bottom is the polyurethane and the top is the standard neoprene. I had high hopes and I ended up just getting annoyed. And I was particularly annoyed because it's not exactly easy to change the belt on my printer. I mean, it starts at the one end, goes around these bearings, goes under the pulley, goes all the way across the bottom, around the other bearings, and then clamps. I mean, I guess it's good that this hideous science experiment of a printer has a little bit of extra bling to go on it. But anyway, I figured since I printed all these cubes out, I could at least pull out some data on what the various jerk speed and acceleration settings do for my ringing. 
The top was printed at 1000 acceleration 5 jerk, the bottom at 4000 acceleration 5 jerk. And both of those prints were at 60, but even when I upped the speed to 100 or 120, it really didn't change all that much. In this one right here was printed at 100 millimeters a second, 1000 acceleration and 20 jerk, and doesn't look too much different than the really slow one. Where this was printed at 60 with 1000 acceleration and 5 jerk, and it looks worse than the fast one. I tried some really oddball settings like high-ish high speed, 4000 acceleration and really low jerk, like 5, and that thing rang like it's nobody's business. And then you can see that dropping the acceleration down to a thousand smoothed it out pretty well. Another thing I did here was to put a little take up pulley right on the belt, just to make sure it wasn't the belts that were doing the ringing. You can see here that it looks basically the same as the other prints with the same settings using different belts and no take up pulley. So what did I learn from this whole thing? Well, it seems that acceleration has a lot more to do with uh, ringing on my printing than the jerk and the speed settings do. I learned that the white belt doesn't really help all that much, at least with my design. And I also learned that setting the jerk too low is just going to make the corners a little bit bulgy, and it's not really going to help the ringing much at all. But I guess that's all good, because it means that the uber white belt wasn't necessary, so I don't have to worry about running small pulleys, and that I don't have to keep the jerk super low, so I don't have to worry about bulging corners as much. And even printing up around 100 and 120 millimeters a second, you can get some decent smooth results as long as you get your acceleration tuned in right. Now I hear you saying already, but Alex, if you're trying to print fast with your acceleration that low, you're never going to reach those speeds. Well, you don't always have to print with super low acceleration. I mean, you don't always have to be printing 90 degree corners on details. And even at 1000 acceleration, 100 into 1000 is 10, so it's only going to take 10 millimeters to get up to that speed anyway. So it seems more beneficial to me to crank up the speed and crank down the acceleration. That way your careful movements are only going to be when it has to slow down for those parts, and then you could just go flat out on the straightaways, unless you're printing tiny little charm bracelet danglers or something like that. I also got this useful little tidbit of information from some documents that I was looking over, so that's a useful little fact to take up space in my brain. But what's most important is that I can pass this test information on to you guys. So if you're switching out your belts and you were wondering if you would get any benefit to going to the white stuff in terms of ringing, if you have a similar setup to mine, you probably shouldn't, so you should just get the regular stuff and save your cash. It's easier to work with, it's easier to cut, and you don't have to worry about running larger pulleys. So if I saved you a little bit of time and money there, you're welcome. But that doesn't mean that there's no setup that would benefit from this. And like I said, I plan to test it in the future. I could see it being useful on Z axes and maybe something like a core Y machine where there's a lot of belt stress, but we'll see that later on. So thanks for checking it out. Hopefully I can get some more conclusive videos out in the future. Sorry this one wasn't as good as it could have been, but I tried to pull out something considering the amount of time that I put into this. We'll see you in the next video, and until then, get out there and make something awesome.